Well, Fram 2 launched while I was on a plane with no available Wi-Fi, and they have already splashed down and safely returned back to Earth for the first time on the Pacific coast, off the West coast, at least as far as a crewed mission recovery goes. So this is my last night in Taiwan, and I wasn't planning on making a video. I figured everyone already knew about this mission at this point, but I've been covering Fram 2 well before they even launched, and so I feel like if I don't make a video about it, then you guys will think that I'm sleeping on the breaking news that seems to be happening every single day. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this video and this wrap up of their mission. Eric, say hi. <laughs> I can't explain how fun microgravity is. Really? Is yeah. it good? The best thing. <laughs> uh, like it looks amazing in the videos when you see astronauts in space. Yeah but it doesn't really it's reflect so the joy that it brings. It's amazing. Your food wants you to eat it. <laughs> I mean, check this out. Oh, <laughs> fog, projectile. How did, you, how did you sleep last night? I slept really Good. well. Good, it was yeah, so well. cozy. I heard that you don't sleep so well in space, but I think we all slept extremely well. Yeah. Now this mission was projected to be three to five days and after nearly four days on orbit, Dragon and the Fram 2 crew safely splashed down at 9.19 a.m. Pacific time off the coast of Oceanside, California, completing the first human spaceflight mission to explore Earth from a polar orbit and fly, of course, over the Earth's polar regions. And as I mentioned, this was Dragon's first West Coast recovery since 2019 and the first Dragon human spaceflight mission to splash down in the Pacific Ocean. So the crew of four got a lot done in just four days. They conducted 22 research studies designed to help advance humanity's capabilities for long duration space exploration and the understanding of human health in space. The crew took the first x-ray in space, performed exercise studies to maintain muscle and skeletal mass, and grew mushrooms in microgravity. Additionally, after safely returning to Earth, the crew exited the Dragon spacecraft without additional medical and operational assistance, helping researchers characterize the ability of astronauts to perform unassisted functional tasks after short and long durations in space. And so you may or may not know that SpaceX will be recovering crew off the West Coast moving forward. In fact, the VP of launch at SpaceX, Kiko Donchev, wrote on X, it took a massive amount of work to move Dragon 2 recovery options from Florida to California. A huge shout out to the SpaceX recovery and space operations team for executing this first time operation safely, reliably, and with precision. And I have to say, if you watched my recent video, which now has over 200,000 views about the Starliner situation and how it was much worse than we previously thought, and the fact that Butch and Sonny were not guaranteed safety as they docked to the ISS with some issues that they were facing, it's just an interesting juxtaposition to see how massively successful, reliable, uh, and efficient SpaceX is and how many people that they've launched to space and successfully returned back to Earth. Now, I have reached out to Chun Wang, the commander and the person who funded this entire mission, a few times for an interview. He has not answered, but perhaps now that the mission is over, he may do an interview about Fram 2. But while I haven't personally spoken to him, following his X account, he's posted a lot about this mission, including some pretty crazy videos while in space. He wrote, I often say Fram 2 is a Svalbard mission. We, the Framonauts, all met on Svalbard and we love the ice. The mission was planned when I lived there and we fly polar because in an ISS-like orbit, we are unable to see where we live. From this perspective, the mission has perfectly achieved its goal. And Yannicke Mickelson also shared this video saying, I promise Svalbard, I would wave to everyone there when I flew over them. Hi Svalbard, in particular, thank you to our auroral scientists and photographers for participating in Fram 2. And so here's just some other really great views from Chun. Here is a time lapse from Antarctica to the Arctic. And here's another video, hello Antarctica. Unlike previously anticipated, 
From 460 kilometers above, it is only pure white. No human activity is visible. Now, Chen also talks about the ride on Dragon and, of course, on Falcon 9. He wrote, The ride to orbit was much smoother than I had anticipated. Apart from the final minute before Seiko, I barely felt any of the G-forces. It honestly felt like just another flight. I had imagined it would feel like being in an elevator that suddenly drops, but the sensation never came. If, if I hadn't set free Tyler, the polar bear zero gravity indicator, I might not have realized we were already weightless. I think being tightly strapped into our seat buckets made the transition less noticeable. The first few hours in microgravity weren't exactly comfortable. Space motion sickness hit all of us. We felt nauseous and ended up vomiting a couple of times. It felt different from motion sickness in a car or at sea. You could still read on your iPad without making it worse, but even a small sip of water could upset your stomach and trigger vomiting. Rabea spent time on the ham radio making con contact with Berlin. No one asked to open the cupola on the first day. We were all focusing on managing our motion sickness. We then had a movie night watching our own launch and went to sleep a bit earlier than scheduled. We all slept really well, which is surprising to me. By the second morning, he says he felt completely refreshed. The trace of motion sickness was all gone. They had breakfast, took a few x-ray images, and opened the cupola three minutes after midnight UTC right above the South Pole. So I have to say, I appreciate how candid he was just about them all experiencing motion sickness. I feel like sometimes astronauts don't want to tell you those juicy or not so appetizing details, but it really helps us here on Earth to understand uh, what it might be like to fly in a dragon and to actually go into space. And one final video that I wanted to show you, this was before the launch, about two hours and five minutes before they launched. And it's a video from Inside Dragon that Chun posted saying, side hatch closed, we are go for launch. So, I'm with the closeout team and everyone at SpaceX, we wish you a great flight. Good luck. Thank you, Obed. Bye. Thank you, team. This is just an interesting intertwining of, you know, social media and posting things live while also launching to and being in space. So I guess the future is now, but hopefully you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I'm going to South Korea tomorrow, so hopefully uh, I'll be able to update you on some of that if you follow me on X, and I'll see you in the next video.